we could probably start with Team Canada. I, I, I was thinking of kind of going quickly line by line and uh, mentioning the extras, but then also the defense pairings and the goaltending as well. Let's let's see how far we can go through it with this one. Team Canada, not that surprising. You have Sidney Crosby, Connor McDavid, Connor Bedard on a line. Uh, Brad I Marchand. chose chaos with that line on purpose. You did. You did. I but, chose uh, chaos. I mean, that's the one chance we might get to see that line. Second line, you have Brad Marchand, Nathan McKinnon, Matthew Barzal there. Mark Stone, Braden Point, Mitch Marner's another line. Zach Hyman, John Tavares, and Sam Reinhart, another line. Mark Shifley and Steven Stamkos as extras. Devin Tays, Kale McCarr as a pairing. Shea Theodore, Alex Petrangelo as another pairing. Josh Morrissey and Drew Doughty as well. Um, Morgan Riley and Aaron Ekblad as extra defensemen. And your goaltenders. I'm very intrigued about this. Aiden Hill, Jordan Bennington. And on the subject of you picking guys who are in form, Cam Talbot is your number three goalie on this team. I'm very intrigued about your selection process. Well, let's start at the top with the forwards. Here's, here's I think, what Team Canada's management staff will first have to reckon with. You've got Sidney Crosby, Connor McDavid, and Nathan McKinnon. They're all natural centers. Do you want to play them as the one, two, three centers on the team, or do you shift one of them to the wing? And, and I'm concluding here that I think they'll shift one of those players to the wing. I, I, I think you do have two options. I think you could, with Nathan McKinnon's speed, I think he could fit well as a, as a right winger on one of the, the top two lines. I've opted to go with Sidney Crosby on the wing. You know, Crosby has said publicly that, that he would welcome a move to the wing to play with Connor McDavid in this type of an event. I think it makes sense. I mean, he's having a monster year still right now, but you know, he's an older guy. I mean, it gives him, it, it reduces his responsibility slightly on the ice. Uh, and, and if Canada has a weakness and I'm not really saying it's a weakness, but they don't have a ton of natural left wingers, I would say to, to, fill out these lines. I mean, Brad Marchand is, is to my eyes, clearly the best natural left wing um, that's Canadian. But to me, it makes sense. If you're shifting one of those centers over, if Crosby's the oldest of the trio, if he's willing to do it, which he said he is to move him over and have him play left wing on the top line with McDavid. So that's, that's kind of how I got to this, the top of this roster. Right. And then the next mm -hmm. decision is okay. Canada has all kinds of skilled, amazing right wing potential players including, as I mentioned, you could be Nathan McKinnon if you moved him over. But then, you know, I've moved Connor Bedard away from center for the purpose of this exercise. You've got Matthew Barzell and Mitch Marner, who I think equally could be on that top line when, when all is said and done. And so that's, that's kind of how I got there with the top lines. Like, you know, I think that Marchand and Crosby had so much success in the 2016 World Cup, obviously skate together. I think Team Canada, where it can, opts for familiarity. Um, and so you might see those players play. Maybe it could be a second line with, with Crosby in the middle. I mean, the truth is, is the coach of this team, whether it's John Cooper or whoever it ends up being, will have all kinds of mix and match opportunities because team Canada is strongest to my eyes down the middle of the ice. Um, I mean, you got Braden point. I mean, I I've made John Tavares, the, the fourth line center. I think honestly, I really like my fourth line here. As I was mentioning yeah. earlier, like the, the debate is tough because you, you don't just all want scorers everywhere. I mean, someone's going to have to kill penalties in, in these tournaments. You know, I don't think you deploy a fourth line, like a shutdown line per se, the way you might in an NHL, but you know, I think you want a certain amount of grit or board play. And I think, Her you know, Hyman Tavares Reinhardt does bring a little bit of edge and, and certainly players that can play, you know, well in tight spaces. You have some familiarity with Hyman and Tavares having played together in Toronto before, um, you know, this is where it gets tough with, with the last picks, right? In this case, I've, I've brought Steven Stamkos and Mark Shifley with Stamkos. This is my reasoning over 500 NHL goals. Like that's a lot to leave at home. I realize in this tournament at five on five, you're probably, he's probably not seeing a ton of ice time just with the players above him and where he's at in his career, but he can clearly play on a power play. If you get an injury or something that requires you to need another option up the lineup, you know, you would have no trouble rolling him out on the top line or the second line. I just think he's not, he's not above the players that are there just at this stage of his career. You know, I think Shifley can, can bring some different elements, you know, among the guys that I had to, to leave off here, Ryan Nugent Hopkins having a great season. Um, you know, there's, there's team Canada, man, like someone's going to someone, you can't bring everyone, right. That's, that's no. the thing. And so that's, that's kind of how I've landed on this lineup. You know, it'd be interesting to see where Mark Stone's at, but you know, he won a Stanley cup. I, th I think he's still there right now. Um, but you know, he's getting into his thirties and, um, 
you know, that's, that's kind of where I'm at with the, the forwards. The, the defense is a little, it's, it's harder and easier at the same time because I know that hockey Canada really likes to, uh, because I know this, that they like to keep pairings together. Like why overthink it? You've got Devin Taves and Kale McCarr who don't exclusively play together, but have played a lot together in Colorado and they've won a Stanley cup together. You've got Shea Theodore and Alex Petrangelo who have played a lot together and have won a cup in the last year in Vegas. I, I think that you keep those pairings together and, and you know, especially McCarr obviously is, you know, at this point in time, he's Canada's number one D man. And so I, I think it makes a lot of sense to bring them. And then, you know, you're in a tough spot. You know, I, I'm not ignoring the great seasons that you're, you're seeing from Evan Bouchard in Edmonton, Noah Dobson on Long Island, both playing a lot of minutes. Bouchard's on pace for like 90 odd points as a defenseman, but I just don't know if they fit in this kind of event fully. Cause you know, uh, they're both right shots that, you know, Canada is loaded down the right side. I've opted to keep Drew Doughty on this team. I think that that, that will be a debate at, at that point in time. I just think he's still effective enough. And, and I love, I love the experience level. Like this guy was in the 2010 Olympics, right? He's, he's done everything. He's seen everything. I think he'll, he'll calm the game down. You know, Josh Morrissey's emerged these last couple of years as a top defenseman. And then, I went with Riley Ekblad as the fourth pairing. They actually played together for Team North America. They were the top pairing yes, for Team North America. Uh, you know, I think Riley's had a bit of an under the radar strong season in Toronto. What I like about him is if you watch the Leafs' last couple of playoff runs, he's really elevated in those big games. I think, you know, again in this tournament he might end up being scratched. Too. Like I don't know because you usually only, uh, typically dress seven defensemen, and I've but but you have eight on the roster, and then Aaron Ekblad uh, was a monster for for Florida last year. So. That's that's kind of how I got there. Um, what about your no goal? matter what, there's going to be a good player on the cutting room floor, uh, and that's and that's but you know you got to make that choice. And so, I actually like this group. I, I spent a lot of time getting to the what you see before you and what you saw in the, the article on the athletic, and then you know the goaltending. Uh, well, yeah. here's the thing. Let's give Aiden Hill some credit here. What Canada really doesn't have, like I think there's I think there's a misconception. Um, what Canada doesn't have is a surefire alpha male top goalie, the way Canada always has. If you go back to whether it was Patrick Waugh, Martin Brodeur, Roberto Luongo, Carey Price in his prime, the like Canada always went into this tournament with like almost no debate about, I mean, maybe some debate about who the number one was, but, but they had top of the league goaltending. Aiden Hill won a Stanley cup for Vegas last year. And if you look at the start to this season, he's been dy dynamite. Like, like, there's nothing to me that says he can't get the job done. We just don't know how, because he doesn't have the pedigree of coming up and being a world junior star and having played in these events for Team Canada, carrying the mail. You know, it's just a bit of an unknown, unknown. That's why I brought Jordan Biddington as the backup. You know, I think, you know, he also has that Stanley Cup pedigree, um, you know, has been part of the Hockey Canada program a bit more in the past. You know, I'm not feeling as great about this as the U.S. probably is with, with their goaltending trio. And then Cam Talbot, I think you bring as a third goaltender. You either bring someone young or you bring someone older who's on form in case it's like break in case of emergency. And so that's 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 kind of how I got to, to Cam Talbot. Um, you know, there's a few other players you you could opt for in that position, but I I think you I think because you're not sure entering the tournament, like is this going to work? I weirdly with Canada's number three, I think you almost bring that number three, thinking they might have to play games, even though it's a short event. Um, and Cam Talbot certainly has played very well for LA this season. So you're not comfortable with bringing in a Stuart Skinner in that position? I, I think I'm less comfortable. You know, if, when we go through the other rosters, in some cases I have brought sort of the next up and coming guy that, that could be there for experience. We've seen Canada do both, right? Like I think Ed Belfour was a third goaltender late in his career in one of those Olympic runs for Canada. But then you also had like a young Marc-Andre Fleury, in 2010 as the third goalie. Like, I think there are two approaches, but you know, when you were bringing Mark Andre Fleury, but you had Martin Brodeur and Roberto Luongo, like you didn't really think it was, it was good experience for Fleury, but you didn't bring him with the intent to play him truly. Right. But I think because the, no matter how this shakes down, I think there's going to be some questions about Canada's number one or two, even if you make a different choice than I make, I mean, you, maybe you're picking Logan, Logan Thompson, you know, Aiden Hill's teammate in Vegas. Who's Carter had a pretty Hart good well. year. Um, exactly. Like maybe you're bringing one of those players, but if you do, I still think you're going to want a third that you might have to use. 